So there are a ton of videos out there telling you how to dress like a cyclist, how to wear your sunglasses over your helmet straps, the correct sock height, all that stuff. This is not one of those videos. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to not dress like a cyclist, but still be comfortable on a bike. Welcome back, Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel or new to cycling and have no interest in the competitive side of riding bikes, you have found your people to hit that subscribe button. So I've been riding bikes and creating content around bikes for well over a decade and rarely am I in full cycling kit, as they say. So before I jump into the meat of this video, I do want to reiterate that I'm not bashing anyone that likes to wear full cycling kit or all the Lycra. This is just about choice. If that works for you and that's how you like to ride, then 100%. But for other people that are looking for an alternative, there's very few guides that tell you how to mix and match things so you can still be comfortable, still ride fast, but look like a civilian. So working from bottom upwards, we're gonna start with one of the most contentious things uh, on this channel. Whenever I create a video about this topic, it just becomes a comment war. And that is, of course, cycling shoes or cycling shoes in air quotes. There's a belief with some people that you're not a real cyclist if you don't wear clip-in shoes or that if you're riding in flat pedals and regular shoes that you're gonna be so slow, you're just gonna fall off the back. So my personal opinion is if you are not racing and you are just a civilian cyclist just riding around or bike touring, there are a lot of advantages to just riding in flat pedals. So typically what's worked for me is shoes like this. This is from a brand called 510. They make all sorts of mountain biking shoes, some with SPD cleats. Uh, this is just their flat pedal. And I like this one because it does have uh, enough support to transfer that power into the pedal. It's got a really grippy bottom. And in terms of walking around, let's say if you're commuting or bike touring, these have great walk ability. Of course, you don't have to just stick to cycling specific uh, flat shoes. One of the shoes that I've been trying out recently that I've actually really liked are these canvas chuckas by a brand called Lems. Again, this is not sponsored. And what I like about this is that this shoe is super light. It's got a nice wide toe box. So if you have a problem fitting into cycling shoes, this is an awesome option. It's got a great sole that's pretty tacky. And if you combine it with a nice big flat pedal with traction pins, it's really supportive and you barely notice it on your feet. So another shoe I've actually done a fair amount of touring and gravel riding in is Blundstones. That's right, they're Chelsea style boots. And what's great about them is that they're waterproof. They're great shoes for riding in colder climates because there's a lot of room to layer socks there. And if your feet get wet because of the rain or the snow, your toes have a fighting chance of staying warm. Of course, your choice of shoe is just half of the equation. To get the most out of a flat pedal and flat shoe combination, you need a good flat pedal. Something that's big and supportive and it has traction pins and doesn't have any lumps in it that could potentially cause hot spots on longer rides. And for me, I'm a huge fan of the EC pedals. I've got their aluminum ones on my Bombora and we've purchased tons of the composite ones. I put those in all the test bikes and they're great because they're not super expensive. They've got a wide surface area and they've got pretty grippy traction pins that will work on most shoes. So just to reiterate, if you're gonna go the, the flat shoe route, you have to combine it with a good pedal. All right, so moving on to socks and basically whatever, wear whatever socks work for you. I tend to like thinner, stretchier ones, especially during the summer, just because they breathe better. And if someone comments about your sock height, they are terrible human beings and just unfriend them. Okay, so moving on to the shorts, I typically ride in a combination of some kind of overshort and some kind of chamois liner beneath that. In terms of the overshort, any short will do as long as you're comfortable in it. I've tried everything from Eddie Bauer uh, hiking shorts that are quick dry and have some amount of stretch. Current favorite overshort are these chrome Madrona shorts and I made a separate video about them. I like them so much. They've got just the right amount of stretch. They're fairly quick dry. They've got nice deep front pockets so things don't fall out. They're also a little bit more on the fitted side. So when I stand up in the saddle, there's no uh, danger of the horn grabbing onto some loose fabric and pulling me back down in the saddle. And they've got a fairly short inseam at about eight inches. And since I'm a shorter person, they actually look like shorts on me rather than some weird capris. Again, these are my current favorite. You don't have to buy these, buy whatever works for you. But those are some of the qualities you wanna look for in an overshort. Next question I often get asked is, do I wear bike shorts or, or bibs or just regular boxers under these shorts? 
And again, every person and every body is different. Some people just absolutely need to wear some kind of chamois and others can, can do without. For me, I'll give you two options. One uh, fairly inexpensive and readily available budget option are the REI mesh liner shorts. What's great about them is that they're fairly affordable. Uh, they do have a lighter, more breathable material. So they're designed to be worn under and over short. And they also have a built-in chamois if that's what you need. So that was the budget option. What is the baller option? And that would have to be these liner bibs by the brand Velocio. They sent this pair to me to review and I'd say prior to using them, I thought that I would never even consider these, but these are pretty amazing to wear. Super breathable, really sheer. Uh, in fact, when you put them on, it's kind of like wearing fishnets. They've got really wide shoulder bands, which would look kind of weird and uncomfortable at first, but they're actually pretty nice because they don't dig into your shoulder blades. Another nice touch is they do have a little cargo pocket on the bottom, so you could put snacks there or a couple dollar bills to buy snacks in the middle of your ride. One downside of these liner bibs for me is that it took a couple rides to really break in the chamois. Out of the box, it's fairly stiff and kind of diapery. So it took about half a dozen rides to compress that chamois and just make it more pliable. But after the break-in period, they're great. They're probably the most breathable uh, chamois that I've ever tried. Definitely on the spinny side, but if you ride in hot climates, uh, something to consider. Okay, moving on to shirts. Some of my favorite options are this shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is actually a fly fishing shirt, although it's kind of Western style. And what's great about using fly fishing shirts for cycling is they're designed to dry really quickly. They also have what's known as an action back because typically, you know, you're gonna be casting a rod and you want that freedom of movement. So it's very non-restrictive. What's nice about this one I'm wearing right now is that it has button snaps. So you can stick your thumb down the middle while riding and literally open up the whole shirt in like two seconds. And I know it seems counterintuitive to be wearing a long sleeve shirt uh, on a hot day in cycling, but one of the advantages of a shirt like this is that it keeps the sun off. For me, I get super hot in direct sunlight and this protects my skin from that direct sunlight. I don't have to wear uh, sunblock here because it's covered by the shirt. And if you want, you can roll up the sleeves and turn it into a short sleeve shirt. I compared riding in this with a traditional jersey and I find that when I ride in a jersey after a long hot ride, I am just cooked. But with a shirt like this, because it does keep the sun off, I feel fresher at the end of the day. This is another example of a fly fishing shirt that I ride a lot in. This one's by Patagonia. Again, here you can see the action back. It's got venting here, lots of freedom of movement. One great thing about all fly fishing shirts is they're designed to fit fly boxes. So these pockets are pretty generous and you'll have no problem sticking a phone in there or even a small action camera. So great shirt to consider. Uh, other variants of this would be a hiking shirt. The similar qualities to look for are, you know, it's quick dryness, it's SPF protection, and also the action back. So I know these shirts in particular are a little bit on the spendy side, but you can still find shirts to ride in. You can go to your local Target and find shirts like this. This shirt is literally bananas. And what I love about this is it's got a fun, playful print. So if you're riding on the road, people can't take you too seriously. And this one is their in-house brand, uh, Goodfellow. Again, not sponsored. And it's Rayon. So it's got some nice stretch to it. It's really quick drying and surprisingly cool when the weather gets hot. I think this shirt, uh, full MSRP was like $16, maybe $20 at most. Much, much cheaper than wearing a jersey top. So I know some of you diehard roadies are gonna be saying, but Russ, these shirts have no pockets. How am I gonna carry my phone, my pump, my snacks? All the things that you would typically place in a jersey pocket. Well, if you're a cyclist like that, I've got you covered. Velocio also makes an interesting mesh uh, base layer tank top that has integrated pockets. Again, a piece I never thought I knew I wanted until I tried it. This one is super breathable feels like you're wearing practically nothing when you put it on because it is so thin. And the beautiful part is that it has three pockets on the back, just like the jerseys you're used to. So you can easily combine that ba base layer with a shirt like this or a shirt like this, have your snacks back there, and as you're riding, just reach under and behind and grab whatever it is you need. So with that base layer and these shirts, you've got a nice blend of performance and casual 
You don't lose any functionality, but you do save some money on the tops and also don't stand out like a sore thumb. If you have any other questions about dressing ca gravel casual, let me know in the comments. But I wanna hear from you guys. Are you guys all cycling kit all the time or do you like to mix it up and ride gravel casual? Let me know. And if you like this content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep the supple side down.